risk of war between North Korea and the United States is, according to experts, higher today than it has ever been. Tension is at record levels as Donald Trump continues to impose sanctions on Kim Jong-un and as North Korea tests intercontinental missiles that are capable of reaching the US. Within North Korea, the regime continues to have one of the worst human rights records in the world. Under Kim Jong-un, the people of North Korea are oppressed and harsh restrictions are put on their political and economic freedoms. Communications are regulated and many North Koreans remain oblivious to the customs and opinions of the outside world. Kim Jong-un continues to operate prison camps where North Koreans are said to be subjected to abuse including forced labour, torture, starvation, rape and murder. Here at Bristol University, one student has had first-hand experience of life in North Korea. Alessandro Ford, third-year philosophy student, has visited on a number of occasions, including for five months in 2014 as a student at the Kim Il-sung University in Pyongyang. Alessandro was the first Western person to study in North Korea and is just back from his most recent visit, working as a tour group leader. We spoke to him about his experiences as a student in the most closed society on earth and his views on what will really happen at this tense moment. So how different did you find North Korea when you first went and what most struck you about it? The main thing um, was actually when you get to North Korea, you're suddenly enveloped in this spatio-temporal bubble. And that's because you have no Wi-Fi. You have no technological devices that, that work anymore. Um, you've got no contact with the outside world in a sense. You're completely cut off. What was life like at university in North Korea? Did it feel really contrasting to life in the West? Yeah, they had strong similarities in their beliefs, um, in that I think North Koreans have a more collective ethos than we do. But then once you dug past that initial cultural mindset, um, you'd get down to the individual's um, more unique uh, beliefs, values, etc. When you first get there, you haven't humanized them in your mind. And I think that's one of the things that in the West we have a problem with in regards to North Korea. Um, we think of them as this uh, giant homogenous unity. Uh, whereas in fact, when you actually start making friends with them, you forget about the portraits of the great leaders on the wall. You forget about the pins of the great leaders over their hearts. Um, and it just becomes your friend. What did you find people knew about the rest of the West and about America? So their, their news all comes from one source, which is state media. And the way they report things obviously has a very specific angle. So I was there in 2014 when um, the crisis in Ukraine was going on. And so the news we got in Europe was that the uh, aggressive Russians were essentially invading the Ukraine. Then I got to North Korea, where it was very much the opposite. The peaceful Russians were trying to control American aggression, and the lapdogs of the EU were being dragged into this mess by their Yankee masters. Um, and so it is very strange when you come up with beliefs that are so different from your own, when people ask you, why do you not have military service in your country? Um, why are your people not patriotic enough to, to fight for the nation, for the fatherland? And you're kind of thinking, you know, my friends barely turn up to vote, let alone go to Iraq. Um, but then you can also bond about other things because at the time I was 18 and all 18 year olds are into drinking, partying um, and generally having a good time. Did you feel that there was a lot of hostility towards the West? Depended on uh, the individuals, but to a large extent, yes. Um, and in a sense, it's understandable. America, during the Korean War, which was a three-year war in 1950, dropped more bombs on Pyongyang, the capital, than the entirety of the bombs dropped on Nazi Germany during the Second World War. Um, so you're talking about a nation that has a debt of psychic suffering that, that runs very deep. And so... Not to, not to be misunderstood, I definitely think North Koreans are wrong when they paint Americans as these evil demons. Um, 
but it's definitely understandable, these hostile perceptions. I do think it's important for us to do things such as visiting North Korea, um, trying to send cultural and educational exchanges to study there and, and go there, um, just to help the people see that not all Westerners are evil. So you say that there was some sort of hostile tension. Did you personally feel safe when you were in North Korea? I felt very safe and I think Westerners who do visit also feel very safe after a few days. Um, the paradox is that the people in, um, in the line of fire, as it were, are those looking after you. So if you do something wrong, the people who will get in trouble will be your minders, who are your tour guides. Um, so they're the ones who might lose their jobs. They're the ones who might be sent to the countryside to work on a farm. And so I think one of the strangest things about going to North Korea is actually you feel someone else is being held hostage um, for your actions. So most of us have heard about the American student Otto Warmbier who came back from North Korea dead. What do you think happened there? What I don't think happened was that he was tortured um, and that he was mercilessly beaten by the North Korean government. Um, what we do know is that when he came back, he was the same body weight as when he left, which means he was well fed. Um, he had no bed sores, despite having been in, in a coma for a year, which means that he was well cleaned. Um, and the doctor who first examined his body when he came um, to the States has gone on record to say that the allegations made by his father that he was tortured and had his teeth knocked out are all patently false. Um, and so it makes you think, why is Donald Trump, who must know what happened if anyone does, um, going on and insisting that the North Koreans tortured him? So how worried do you think uh, we in the West should be about the current tension between North Korea and the rest of the world? I wouldn't be worried for our safety um, or even for the safety of um, Americans, South Koreans, North Koreans. The situation is very tense at the moment, more tense than I've ever seen it. Um, having said that, the Americans are very much aware that the North Korean nuclear program has gotten to a stage where the, uh, the toothpaste is out of the tube. The North Koreans are very much able to inflict massive casualties on South Korea in the event of conflict. Um, and so any aggression on either side is going to lead to a massive loss of life, which means that nothing will happen. Because in a sense, um, Kim Jong-un is more rational at the moment than Donald Trump himself. Um, he merely wants North Korea to be seen as, um, as a country that can fight back. Um, and he thinks the only way to ensure the survival of his regime is by having nuclear weapons. So you're currently writing a book. Could you tell me a bit more about that? It's going to be called The Red Pill, um, which is a reference to the film The Matrix. And that's very much how I felt in North Korea um, when people would ask me about the Western world and about home and, and what we thought about North Korea. Um, I would often feel, do I explain this painful truth, which will, in a sense, shatter their reality and all the foundations on which they've built their life and their identity? Um, or do I give them a half truth? Um, which which is very much softened. I tended to um, to do a bit of a bit of both.